crappy weather at the 2024 Colorado Spring game has forced us into Bolts Fieldhouse for our post-game analysis. Uh, the day started with an awesome moment. Charlie offered all who has received praise from Coach Prime pretty much since the time he got here or shortly thereafter and uh, was able to award him a scholarship. Yeah, and also received praise quite a bit from the previous staff as well. So he's just a guy that ever since he got here has just shown up and worked hard. And, um, yeah, and he gets into thing Charlie Often ball last year from Coach Prime, and, and now he's, uh, you know, Charlie on scholarship. So, um, you know, great moment for him because he's been one of the hardest working guys on this team. And, and frankly, you know, when we talk about running backs a lot of times, um, it seems like we kind of forget about him because he's that walk-on. Um, now maybe we won't, but it's still when he carries the ball, he gets yards, you know, and he's one of those guys like, well, okay, maybe he's not so bad, you know, uh, and he, he puts in the work and, and he deserves it. And unfortunately, he wasn't able to participate today so that he's going to be sidelined for a couple more weeks because these are the type of showcases where a guy like yeah. Charlie Offerdahl, and, and he maybe does have a chance to get some carries during the season, but yeah. this, these are always those opportunities for the walk-ons. And so uh, Christian Serum got that opportunity, and we saw Isaiah Hodge, who was a cornerback yeah. about a week ago, uh, play at running back, and he had, some, he had a touchdown. He had some, some hard runs out there. Yeah, you know, Shador Sanders was actually saying that uh, Harge, um, you know, has only had two practices and, uh, you know, complimented him for how good of a job he did in those two practices. And, yeah, he had another long run as well and looked like a running back. And Coach Prime mentioned how he's just an athlete, um, you know, and, and went out and did some good things. So I don't know if he would stay there, uh, but certainly, uh, you know, had a good spring game. I would think you'd have to say LeJonte Wester was kind of the, the standout star. I mean, folks that really – they closely watch CU football recruiting. Yeah. They knew what he was capable of coming in from FAU, but this was an opportunity maybe for the casual fan to just see how special he is working out of that slot receiver role. Yeah, you know, he and Shador had a nice connection for a touchdown early in the spring game and, um, yeah, um, caught the ball. And, you know, he, he did have one drop, but, I mean, on a rainy day like this, um, to catch almost every pass coming your way, he looked pretty good. The offensive line gave Shadour Sanders more time. It was a cleaner pocket than what we're, we were used to seeing last year. Uh, there were a couple breakdowns here and there, uh, but even Coach Prime said afterwards that they're getting closer to where they want to be with that group. Still maybe a, a couple more pieces to add in there, and then the competition really uh, – gets heated up during during preseason camp. Yeah, you know, and you know, Shador even mentioned, hey, if I get that type of protection, I'm going to do some good things. And so uh, they're, they're pretty pleased with that. I mean, all the comments throughout spring um, have been pretty solid about that offensive line. They weren't last spring and, and really even last fall at times. And so um, you have to like what you're hearing coming out of the camp about the offensive line. And we knew this was going to be a vanilla offense that we saw out there today. I think aside from what we've talked about today, if you're analyzing it, even further than that, you're probably overanalyzing it, right? Yeah, for sure. And especially uh, at the running back position where, um, you know, the guys that played today are not going to be the guys that you know, really play. We don't think Isaiah Hard. It sounds like it's temporary. But they got running backs coming in. And, you know, uh, Michael Welch is going to be healthy, we think, at some point. And Charlie Offerdahl uh, was not healthy today. So, yeah, you know, especially at those positions. But if you're analyzing too much, uh, you know, you're wasting your time a little bit, but the main thing is that protection on the offensive line and Shador Sanders looking good with Jonte Wester throwing or catching the ball pretty well. Just watching pregame warmups, that defensive line group looks a whole lot different than it did a year ago at this time. They were uh, they, they brought in some pieces last summer and they've continued to do that this offseason. Uh, Torian Carter sure looks the part, and Quinn Barnes. I mean, these are yeah. some big guys, Quincy Wiggins, guys that certainly look the part. Yeah, for sure. And Torian Carter had a nice uh, pass breakup at the line. Um, you know, uh, Amari McNeil had a sack in there today. Uh, so they, they looked good. And, uh, and you know, Chidozi Nwanko didn't even really participate today. Um, but that's going to be a key piece for them as well. So, um, you know, that group, I think, is much better. I mean, we've talked about the trenches so much. Uh, and that's the difference in this team right now is the trenches. I think they're in pretty good shape right now. And maybe the, the star defensively today was linebacker Jeremiah Brown. And Coach Prime was asked about him, and he said he was having a hard time figuring out what he wanted to be and uh, bounced around between the, be playing on the edge and playing linebacker. And it does seem like this spring he has found a home at linebacker, and that's huge because that's one of the biggest positions of need on this team. Yeah, and he also mentioned that you know there's always been good buy-in from Jeremiah. They've always had a good relationship, but he just needed to find that spot and settle on something and figure out what he wanted to be. And, 
um, you know, you saw, to your point, you saw him today flying around making plays, and um, I think there are opportunities potentially for him to, you know, he does love to rush the passer. And I think there's going to be opportunities for him at times to maybe go on the edge and, uh, you know, rush the passer as well. And so um, he's a guy that, was a big time playmaker at Jackson State. And so I think a lot of fans were excited about him last year. He didn't get on the field a ton. Um, a good special teams guy, but not on defense. Um, so he's a guy that I look at and say, you know, he's one of those potential, um, I guess, breakout type of players for this year because we didn't see him a whole lot last year. And we got to see DJ McKinney's length with her own eyes today. Yeah. And Preston Hodge closed on the ball well. Uh, but it was a treat watching Travis Hunter play in the nickelback role. He is very willing to lend a hand in run support. Uh, maybe makes you a little bit nervous, but uh, he's just such a gamer and such a joy to watch play the game. Yeah, well, he just loves playing football, right? And that's what you hear about him is all the time. I don't know how many times we've heard, you know, they try to give him a break and he's like, no, I don't want to break. I, and he gets bored not playing football. He just wants to play football. And, you know, and frankly, when you look at, like, uh, last year, I mean, go back to last year when he gets hurt against CSU and his response, you know, Buff Nation is upset, right? Uh, you know, really upset with that hit and everything. And his response is, that's a football play. That's going to happen if you play football. Um, he just, you got to love his approach to the game, his talent, but then his approach to the game, I think makes him even better. And recruiting has been going crazy, and I'm sure there's uh, going to be more news. we got to catch up on that because that's almost another whole analysis <laughs> segment in and of itself. But yeah. all of a sudden now, you know, they're filling up that 2025 class. Yeah, they got a couple recruits from 2025. They get another transfer recruit at linebacker today. Uh, so, what is it, three recruits now for 2025? They've gotten in the last uh, couple of days. Another's and close. Another one is close. And so, um, you know, there's probably others that are right behind that. And, uh, and so, uh, we've seen it before. Like last year, there were some that, that committed early and then they didn't uh, stay with them. But um, it's good to see there, these are positive signs right now. And uh, there are more uh, transfers coming. There's a lot more coming. You know, even Coach Prime said today, he said, They've committed, but just wait. They're, they're, the announcements are coming. So, um, you know, spring game, the spring game is over, but there's going to be a lot of news coming with the yeah. Buffs. Exactly. The second spring under Coach Prime here at the University of Colorado, like you said, is a wrap. And now uh, it's about filling in those, those gaps with personnel, uh, and it will continue to be busy with transfer portal, portal news in the coming weeks.